What's up everyone, it's Q here, and there's Nintendo Switch rumors for absolute days. They're everywhere, any, da any day and any damn time you look, it's it's getting to the point where it's just ridiculous. And I'm just kind of ignoring most of them. Well, I'm, I'm reading them, I'm not exactly taking them to heart, but I'm not usually talking about them too much as well. So, there is one that keeps cropping up that I do want to talk about, and... It's a rumor from several different places, and there are one or two other kind of processes going on that are lending a little bit of credence to it. So, the main one, first off, before we, we get going, as I mentioned, this is all rumors. This is what I'd like from it and all as well, and we, I'm sure we'll find out more details in about two weeks when Nintendo actually have their official proper Switch unveiling instead of the whatever that was, the teaser trailer, like, a month ago, or a month and a half ago, whenever it was, but, uh, yeah, so when we see the actual reveal, the, the thing we should have seen a few, few weeks, few months, whenever it was ago, but anyway, on to the actual part that I do want to talk about, so the reoccurring rumor, and whatever you want to call it, like, other licensing issues, and other things that kind of hint towards it, is that the Nintendo Switch could possibly have GameCube virtual console support which is fantastic obviously it, it there's no actual disc slot on it so i mean it's it's virtual console it's digital it's downloadable that's that's good because if the rumors if the rumors are true first off gamecube games are relatively small the gamecube discs were i think 1.8 gig at the small dvd ones so the games themselves were usually on one maybe two discs so even if you have a two disc game that usually maxes out at about 3.6 gig. I think it's about I think it was 1.8 per disc. So they're still relatively small and as far as I know I've never seen a GameCube game that has more than two discs. If there is, feel free to let me know and correct me down there because it's always handy to know something like that. But I've never seen personally a game that has more than two discs. Now, the rumors are that the Nintendo Switch is going to have 32 gig of internal memory and a uh, a micro SD card slot supports up to 128 gig in a micro SD card, which is pretty good. That's 160 gig total. That's a significant amount of GameCube games. Now, I'm sure there's probably other, other things in there too, you know, possible. I know it's all cartridge based, but, you know, there's storage for your actual Switch digital download games. There could be, for some reason, installed data onto the onto the actual internal storage. We'll see how it goes. We, we'll find all that stuff out eventually, but that's that's not a, it's not factoring in. We're just looking at the base storage memory, like 32 gig and up to 128 gig. So, in the, the aspect of the GameCube emulation and what that offers, that's a significant amount of GameCube games. GameCube had a decent sized library. It was a bit smaller than most of the other consoles of the, well, well you know, when you're looking at the, the sixth generation of consoles, the, the leader is obviously the PS2. So that was, that's always the, the main comparison. So the GameCube library was considerably smaller than the PS2, but it did have some excellent games on there and some excellent ports, some excellent, fir obviously excellent first party games, some excellent third party exclusives and some superior versions of multi-platform games. Now, there's one other thing I want to look at. Well, there's, there's a couple, but there's one other important one I want to bring up, um, which I'll, I'll touch on now in a minute. So we'll go over some of the, the least or less important ones. So what would we expect from a standard virtual console style support? When you look at the virtual console on the 3DS, the new 3DS in the case of the Super Nintendo virtual console, the Wii and the Wii U. So at this point... Would we get save states? Probably. Just because it's it's pretty much easy to do, you know? So, we're probably going to have save states. We're probably going to... Because of the... The... What, what was the what was it called? Not Miitomo. Miiverse. There you go. Because of, of Miiverse and the slight foray into the social aspect that you'd have on the Wii and... Or, sorry, the Wii U and, and all that. With how, how more exceptionally more social focused current consoles are, 
like when you look at the Xbox One and the PS4, they all have you know broadcast software built in, stuff like Twitter built in for screenshots, things like that. Chances are Nintendo is going to have something like this, even if it's some updated version of Miiverse, or if it's actual proper like YouTube, Twitch, or Twitter integration, whatever. So chances are some of that is going to be on there, which is going to come in handy because you know screenshots can just be posted as well as the just obviously the as we mentioned it's kind of irrelevant in comparison but the you know the save states and all too one thing that would be nice as well i don't exactly consider this one a save state but when you look at a lot of the virtual console games when you shut the game down and then boot it back up mid play it picks off or picks up where you left off. So, like, you could be halfway through a level in Super Castlevania 4 on your new 3DS. You turn it off. You don't don't even save state. Just literally turn it off. Turn your 3DS off. Do the whole power thing for the 3DS. Then turn it back on maybe a week later. Boot the game back up. And you're exactly where you left off without having to do a save state. I think we'll probably see something like that in there as well. Which is all good. And... There's rumors out there at the moment that the emulator or whatever it is, well, obviously it's going to be an emulator. Let's call it the Virtual Console emulator for the, the supposed GameCube support on the Switch is going to handle it in its original resolution, which will be pretty weird considering that the Switch is at least a 720p screen. It could be even higher. We'll find out probably in about two weeks. And it's a widescreen screen widescreen screen it's a yeah it's a widescreen display versus the old 4.3 displays on the the gamecube games so they were obviously much much lower resolution they're obviously all sub hd some games even supported 480p which used to be a big deal back then i mean hell it still basically is if you look for you know any gamecube component cables online to get the you know, the best experience out of your GameCube, you're going to be forking over the price of a Switch just for a component cable. I digress, anyway. So, that's that's another thing, too, that we're going to have to take into consideration. Also, if they're displayed onto the TV rather than just on the, the Switch display, that's a whole other thing as well. Obviously, you're going to have a big 1080p or 4K display. It's going to be a massive screen. It's obviously, because of these resolutions, it's a widescreen format. So... How is that going to handle it? Either is it going to stretch it? Is it going to scale it properly? Is it actually going to upscale it or whatever? Or is it just going to have like black bars or just look horrible? We'll see how it goes anyway. But that all leads me to my next point. There's one other small one I want to make after this this big important point. But my big important point is what kind of emulator are we going to see on the switch for gamecube games now this is important for a couple of different reasons one we all know nintendo can definitely do new very very high quality emulators for their products now most people are instantly going to think whoa whoa, whoa, wait a minute the wii u emulator was a piece of shit that's true the wii u emulator was a piece of shit but my point is that the guys over at Nintendo, specifically the Nerd Division, and if you're wondering why I call them the Nerd Division, it's because it's the N-E-R-D, Nintendo Europe Research and Development. So those guys, they created specifically from scratch the emulator that you find on the Mini NES or the NES Classic, whatever you want to call it. And we all know that that emulator, despite running on hardware less powerful than the Wii U, significantly outperforms the the emulator on the Wii U. So the Mini NES, I'm sure as you all know, has a custom custom Nintendo developed emulator that runs better than the emulator and the virtual console on the Wii U. So Nintendo could in theory, well, obviously they're going to have to write an emulator of some sort, but they might just not make a basic basic generic style GameCube one. What they might do, and here's where this is important if you ask me, is they might make some new beast custom emulator. Now, what do I mean by that? We all know that the Nintendo Switch runs some form of... I was going to say Nintendo. Some form of NVIDIA Tegra chip. Now, a lot of people were disappointed that it's not a custom Pascal X2. A lot of people seem to... 
well, a lot of places and rumors seem to suggest and report that it's going to be based on the, the Maxwell X1 processor. Now, most people will probably be freaking out about that, but we're not talking about Zelda Breath of the Wild. We're not talking about the new Smash Brothers game that's going to be out in four years, or whenever it is. We're not talking about any of these crazy big-ass new games. We're talking about what this means for possible GameCube emulation. Now, so we all know that Nintendo can make these great emulators if they really want. Now, if you're not familiar with it, there is an emulator specifically designed for GameCube. Uh, well, it's more designed for Wii games, but it basically supports GameCube on there too, as well as a bunch of, of older other stuff. But the, the Dolphin emulator, which runs GameCube games and Wii games alike, which can run on the NVIDIA Shield the NVIDIA Shield TV, which uses the Maxwell X1, it handles GameCube and Wii games absolutely amazingly. You're talking native 1080p rendering. You're not dropping frames. You're talking multi-sample anti-aliasing, which is a big, big, big performance. It's a bit of a performance hog, but the quality you get on the returns are fantastic. You get really high quality, you can get really high quality, I hate pronounce, trying to pronounce this word, anisio, anisiotropic, anisiostropic, I, I can never pronounce the word properly, AF filtering basically. You can get up to 16x, which is basically the top quality setting, while using multi-sample anti-aliasing, while running natively at a HD or full HD resolution, based on the chip that is in the Nintendo Switch or rumored to be in the Nintendo Switch. Which means, if Nintendo make a great custom emulator around this and use the GameCube emulation as a big selling point with the great emulator and the hardware that's in it, we could see some absolutely excellent quality GameCube. Now, I won't even call them GameCube ports or GameCube versions. Whatever, or GameCube Virtual Consoles, we could just see some fantastic GameCube games on there. And that's some of the most important points on there. Sure, most people will be happy if we just get, you know, a standard 480p resolution of it, or even even if you just go by the old, like, whatever it runs at. Uh, some games run at different resolutions interlaced. But some people will be happy with that, as long as it just supports it, which I would be too. But... Nintendo could go the extra mile. They could go so much more and give us so much more. And you may think, it's, oh, you know, the old one is good enough for me. If you, okay, fair enough. That is for most people. But I implore you, go out. You're on YouTube listening to this video as it is. Just go up to the search bar at the top. Type in Nintendo Dolphin 5 emulator, blah, blah, blah. Or type in your favorite game. Type in, like, Dolphin emulator and then your favorite game. Your favorite GameCube games. Or some GameCube games that you liked that were you, you felt were graphically impressive. See what they can be done with the hardware that's in the Switch. And you can imagine, you know, playing all your games equivalent to that. It would be fantastic. It would be such such a great move from Nintendo, not just because it gives us what we want, but it's, it's, it portrays the image that they care about the people that are going to buy their console. It portrays the image that, well, hang on, you know, we could do the bare minimum, but we're going to go the extra mile, give you all these great games from our history on our backwards compatibility in virtual console form that people know and love and are now even better. Because I know there's some fantastic games on the GameCube. I absolutely love the GameCube. There's so many great games on it. Not even just the first party games. You've got games like Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Obviously, brilliant game. As far as I know, the standard version of Crystal Chronicles was never properly ported to anything else. There was other spin-offs and sequels or whatever. But I would love to see that running maxed out on a Switch with a proper emulator with better resolution and better graphical settings. Sure, the textures are going to be the same, but with all the extras, oh, just as soon as I walk through that miasma field and there's a big cool-ass explosion, I remember seeing that and thinking it was one of the best things I've ever seen graphically at the time. You've got, I'm not even going to go through all the other games. There's, there's third-party great, 
third party great games there we go tongue ties for days like you're looking at tales of symphonia sure it's available on other stuff now but it's argued that the gamecube version is the original and best version mainly because of the frame rate there's other things to look at as well that's obviously you know namco bandai so let's see what else do we have we've got resident evil sure there's a hd version of it now uh, resident evil zero again hd version resident evil 4 again hd version but some people argue that the GameCube version of Resident Evil 4 is the definitive edition because even though I have the the piece the newest PC version of the HD remaster of 4 but that's such a mouthful given Capcom names there's a certain type of water effect and whatever you want to call it, I I think it's called like dynamic water or something that's only found in the GameCube version. It's not found in any other port, remaster, or HD version, or anything like that. Even though, obviously, a PC is significantly more powerful than the GameCube, it's just not in it for some reason. It's only in that version of the game. So, that it just goes to show, let's see, last one, I promise, last one, okay? Not even including the, the first party Nintendo titles. Skies of Arcadia Legends. Nuff said. Everyone needs that game. So, all I can say is that, God, I'm, I'm so sick here, I'm dying, that Nintendo, I, I really hope you go the extra mile. You utilize this hardware based on what we all already know it can do and give us not just a bare bones experience, but really go above and beyond and astonish us because... I know it would be worth it in the long run. A friend of mine, ever since the, the actual... He was all about the Switch, or all about the NX, I should say, until it was announced as the Switch. And then within a week of the, the teaser, he was completely... Like, there was more and more details and all coming out about it. He was completely turned off it, and he didn't want it at all. Then when, they, when he found out there's potentially GameCube support more recently, just because of GameCube support alone, he's back in and wants that. Nuff said, just just for GameCube support alone. He said he'd probably rarely buy an actual Switch game and just buy a shitload of GameCube games. So, you get the idea. So, it is a very important thing, Nintendo. It's a very important thing. Please do not fuck it up and please go the extra mile because if you can give me those quality upgrades, if you will, whatever, for four or five years worth of a Switch, just imagine how many sales... Of virtual console games you're going to make. And we all know you love your virtual console games. Because they make you so much money. So much. So much profit. So yeah. That's basically it. I'm going to leave it at that part. Because I've talked way. Way. Way too long about this. What are your hopes and dreams. For the game, the alleged GameCube emulator on the Switch. For the virtual console. Do you think Nintendo will go the extra mile? Do you think they'll just give us kind of. The basic virtual console functionality like we have now on their other consoles and their other handhelds for whatever platforms or do you think and hope they'll go above and beyond and do all of that we'll find out now in two weeks anyway hopefully when they do their proper switch reveal that is long overdue and we should have got two months ago but yeah we'll see how it goes anyway i'm looking forward to it and hopefully they can wow me and knock my socks off Anyway, let me know all that in the comment section below. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter. Details in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the rest of the videos in my channel.